Hello everyone, this is Alex Spivak, the creator of Chronicles of the Enigmatic. Before tonight's episode starts, I just wanted to give a quick update on the podcast. So as you may have noticed, there haven't been any episodes for a few months, and the reason is because I've been getting some editing help with some of my stories, in addition to writing some of these new stories as well. So in general, I'm really hoping that the stories are going to start being a little bit better and the quality of the content themselves is going to be a lot more enjoyable for everyone. In addition to that, I also got some better sound equipment from microphones to headphones and just generally practicing my audio mixing skills. So hopefully the podcast will actually sound a lot better because I know there was some feedback on the first couple episodes about some fuzziness and just certain parts were a little bit louder than others. So hopefully starting with this episode, you'll notice an improvement in that department. Most importantly, what I'm excited about is the fact that I have actual voice actors now. So in addition to just hearing my voice, you'll start hearing people contribute to the podcast. And I'm really excited because I think that will make the show a lot more dynamic and believable when you'll see different people interacting. So in addition to that, the show is now available on Stitcher. So definitely subscribe to it there. And you can now follow us on Twitter at C-O-T-E podcast. So tweet at us and I'll definitely respond back to you. So thanks again for sticking with the show, and I really appreciate it. Enjoy tonight's episode. There are times in our lives when we experience something that causes confusion or prevents us from understanding the truth. We see things with our own eyes and try to convince ourselves of what has happened by relying on preconceived notions. However, seeing is not always believing, and not everything is always as it seems. You are about to embark on a journey that will open your mind to what lurks just beyond the grasp of man's comprehension. Welcome to another chapter of Chronicles of the Enigmatic. Tonight's story is entitled Remember Me and is written and narrated by Alex Spivak. The characters for this episode are voiced by Robert Lear, Eric Peabody, Alex Spivak, and Ashton Thornton. On nights when the weather is nice, you may find yourself going for a walk around the neighborhood. It can be very relaxing after a tough day to just unwind and breathe in some fresh air. In most neighborhoods, there are street lamps illuminating the path, and sometimes in the distance, you can hear the howling of stray dogs. Typically, most people stick to a known route so they can be familiar with their surroundings and stay out of harm's way. On the other hand, there are those who decide to be more adventurous and veer off the beaten path. When traveling into the unknown, we pray for safe passage, and usually we succeed, but on rare occasion, you may find yourself on a much more treacherous trail than originally anticipated. All right, Taylor, I'll see you later. Nice hanging out again. Oh man, I'm beat. I didn't even realize it was already 11. We were hanging out at the park so long I lost track of time. I gotta get home and get to bed. So, if I go down Wilson and cross over at 12th Street, I should make it home in about 20 minutes and I won't have to go through any major traffic areas. Although, I did hear about those muggings in that neighborhood a couple months back. Maybe I should go down Apple Lane, take a right on Cherry, and I think a left on 7th Street, and then I would be pretty close to home. Ah, that would take 15 minutes longer and I, I don't feel like walking that long. I don't see any cabs either. Hmm. I guess I got no other choice. I'll start going down Apple for now. I haven't taken that route in ages, and I'm honestly not sure if I even know the right way. Too bad all the cabs are gone now. All those apps to get a ride yourself are taking over. Cell signal sucks around here, or else I would request one myself. Ah, whatever. It's a nice night, and I could use the exercise. Man, I can't believe how different things look out here at night. I mean, whenever I'm driving, I at least have my car lights and things are easy to see, but just these street lights alone make things super eerie. Next thing I know, I'm going to see a black cat cross my path or something. Oh, wow. I didn't know Randy's shop closed down. I thought this place was still open. That's crazy. They had the best sandwiches in town, but I guess business was slow. Damn shame. Oddly enough, I was expecting a full moon tonight to really set the mood, but now it's just a crescent. I can't believe how clear the skies are either. Not a cloud in sight. 
All right, here's Cherry Street, and Seventh should just be a block or two farther. Almost home. I can't wait to put on my pajamas and crawl into that soft bed and just pass out. My eyes are getting super heavy. All right, and here's 7th Street. Take a left and I'm in the home stretch. All I gotta do is keep an eye out for one more turn and... Uh, you gotta be kidding me. Closed for construction? When did this happen? This road looks torn up. Uh, let me see what this sign says. As of April 5th, this street will be closed for three weeks to lay down new asphalt and rebuild sidewalks. Please use Walnut and cross through Alt Park as a temporary detour. We apologize for the inconvenience and thank you for your patience. This is ridiculous. You'd think they would have given people a little more warning about this. Ah, now I need to find wherever Walnut is and cross through the park just to get home. Ah, screw it. I'm walking through this chaos. I don't care if I get a bit messy. I'm on the verge of passing out here. Looks like there's just some tape and barricades. I'll just hop over them and I'll be alright. Ah, gross. Some mud and junk on the ground. Uh, good thing these are some blown out tennis shoes anyways or I'd be pissed. Wow, they really are doing a lot here. I guess I'm happy that they're fixing this street. It was riddled with potholes and the weeds were starting to break up the pavement. It took them long enough. I guess Miss Robinson over there finally called the city council and they had enough of her complaints. Good for her. All right, I'm almost there. I guess this wasn't that bad. It could have been worse. My shoe could have gotten stuck in something causing me to... Ah, spoke too soon. Oh, my head. The heck did I hit it on? It wasn't a pipe or anything. Huh, what's this? Hmm, a cassette tape recorder? Why is this here? I wonder if someone dropped it. Looks like there's a tape in here. I wonder if it's anything good like some old Stones albums or something. Well, let's see what it's called. Remember Me, Volume 4. And it looks like a name is written underneath it. Robert Burton. Weird. Never heard of him. I should probably just wait until I'm home to listen to it. Ah, finally, here's the end of this construction. Five minutes till I get home. Might as well turn it on and see if it still works. Maybe I'll discover some new music to check out. Gotta rewind it first and start from the beginning. Damn, the battery still works too. Holy crap, 1989. This thing's over 25 years old. This is a recording to prove that I'm not crazy. To anyone who is listening to this, you probably saw that I wrote my name as well as volume four on the cassette tape. That is because I'm not the first one and you will not be the last if you continue to listen to this tape. To be honest, it may already be too late. And for that, I truly apologize, but I had to do it. I was left with no other choice. You see, I had to document what has happened. The next person who picks this up might have a chance to stop it. I do not have much time, and I can only tell you so much before it happens again. What the hell am I listening to? Is this thing for real? This is starting to weird me out a bit. I need to turn this thing off before I start getting paranoid. What was that? Was that an animal, or am I just imagining things? All right, I need to head home ASAP. Come on, come on. Whew. Well, that was a little too much for one night. I think it's time to head to bed and just relax for the evening. I'll listen to the rest in the morning. What a weird night. I nearly lost it there for a minute. All because that damn tape. 
Someone really was a good storyteller, though. Spooked me there for a second. Well, I might as well keep listening to see how the story ends. It's the least I could do for that guy from 25 years ago or so. I wonder if he's even alive anymore. It sounded kind of old. It all started about a month ago. I was walking back from work at Stenco, and I took a path that I wouldn't usually go down. I would typically take East 4th Street, but today I had to stop at Harmon's Grocers to pick up some milk, so I went down to Woods Grove instead. After that, I took a different path home, and since it was nice out, I figured, why not? By the time I left the store, the sun had already set, but I could still see enough to walk around. Eventually, I passed by a tree, and at the base of it, I saw a tape recorder, presumably the one you're holding currently right now. That is, unless this tape was removed and put into a new one. It was a black tape recorder made by Wally's Electronics, and on the back, there was a date stamp that said March 26th, 1975. Yeah, looks like the same one, I guess. Date and color match. is getting too heavy for me. This guy's either nuts or a really good actor. Honestly, I really can't tell which. I will say I'm intrigued, though. I do want to hear what this man has to say. Let me see if I can look him up online. Robert Burton. Birthday, February 12th, 1962. Huh. No results. Didn't he mention a job somewhere? What was it called? Oh, yeah, Stetco or something. Let's see if I can find it now. Uh, Robert Burton, Stetco, 1989. Huh, still nothing. Oh, what about instead of his name, I type in his wife's name? Louise Meredith Burton. Oh, here's something from an archive of a small newspaper. Let's see what this article says. It's dated uh, October 25th, 1982. Header says, Local restaurant shop opens up, gets big support from Stetco staff on opening day. Well, that's pretty cool. I guess this is a popular spot to eat in that part of town. Maybe Robert met his wife through this. Ah, who knows? Let me see what else this Robert has to say.
What he expected was a response back saying, Hey, honey, welcome home. But that was not the case. A shriek came ringing through the hallways saying, Get out of my house! Who are you? What are you doing here? Jeremy confusingly tried calming Rebecca down, but it was no use. Honey, it's me. It's Jeremy. What's wrong? said Jeremy. Rebecca replied, It's me who? I've never seen you before in my life. Get out before I call the cops. Jeremy tried to figure out what in the world could have been going on and why she was so upset. Long story short, he eventually had to leave when the cops came to their house. Rebecca had no recollection of Jeremy and claimed to have never seen him before. He tried convincing the cops that he lived there and that Rebecca was his wife, but oddly enough, there was nothing left in the house to support his claim. Where he thought pictures should be, there were none. Where he kept his three-piece suit in the closet upstairs by the bathroom, there was instead a towel closet. That small shelf he built in the den after Christmas one year, where he had stored that large encyclopedia set, now replaced by a lamp. It was as if he never even lived there. When he was taken to the station, the cops thought he was on drugs or something, and they put him in a cell till morning. They let him out after he apologized and said he had a rough night or something and was grieving over a breakup. Even though that's what he told the cops, Jeremy knew something was going on. His tape was filled with all sorts of these stories right up until the last day. People not remembering him, events that he swore took place apparently never occurring, and just that general feeling that he was wasting away little by little every day. Eventually, he started talking about the tape recorder and the tape he had found in it. Like I said before, I'm volume four, and Jeremy was number three. Jeremy started saying that he had found a tape with the name Peter Reynolds, which was volume two, and on Peter's tape, there was a man named Martin Chappelle, which was volume one. Now, by this time, I started wondering where all these tapes were, and if they were so important, why didn't Jeremy keep them? However, I soon realized why. Jeremy started saying that after the next person listened to the tape, it would disappear just like the individuals who recorded the tapes. Now I thought, how does the tape just disappear? Maybe they lost track of them, but with something this odd and this important, I would hold on to it for dear life. Two days ago, I lost Jeremy's tape. I went to sleep one night with the tape in the recorder, and when I woke up the next morning, it was gone. I couldn't believe it. I went and asked my wife Louise if she happened to come in last night and take it, but she said no. I had to come to terms with the fact that this tape was no joke. Like Jeremy, I also started observing weird occurrences and having very unusual experiences with some of my closest friends, but I'll get to that in a moment. Now, to give you a chance to look things up, one of the facts mentioned in Jeremy's tape was the fact that he worked at a company downtown called Intellibrate. He was a manager and was in charge of some big initiative to be environmentally conscious and all that. He ended up doing some great work, or so he said, and got the city rallied around his cause and everything. Sounds great, right? Only problem is that when I went to the company last week, and yes, that initiative did happen, as Jeremy explained. However, the program was created by a guy named Stephen Waters. They had never heard of Jeremy before. While this seemed suspicious, it did fall in line with Jeremy's story. Man, this is crazy. I already tried searching for Robert. Let me see if I can find anything on Jeremy now in this Intellibrite Corporation. Hmm. Just as Robert said, here it is. The Green Initiative created by Stephen Waters in 1970. Saved millions of dollars and the city was happy that it helped the environment. No mention of this Jeremy. No trace at all of Jeremy online. I can't find a thing about him. Same as Robert. Well, then again, we are going back into the 70s now, so I can't expect to find everything with the click of a button. Let's see what else Robert has to say. So, did you try finding Jeremy as you did with me? Came up with nothing, didn't you? I told you it would be impossible. Unfortunately, Jeremy's words were as somber just as those before him, all of them slowly going into madness, family forgetting them, events that they could recite in crystal clarity no one remembered. Then, in their last moments of sanity, they recorded their thoughts onto this tape in the hope that someone would remember them. Then, out of nowhere, their voices stop, as does the tape. How these tapes and this recorder keep getting found is unknown to me, but I feel like I have a sacred duty now. I must recount their stories so that someday, someone will figure out what keeps happening. So please, if you are listening to this, do yourself a favor and go to your nearest loved one and double-check that they still remember you. This way, you will have a frame of reference for when it begins, and you may be able to see if things start to get worse. I need to take a break from this. Uh, plus, I'm starving. I'll see if Dad's cooking anything for breakfast. Hey, 
Hey, Dad, what's for breakfast? Oh, good morning, Mike. I figured I'd make you some pancakes this morning. It's been quite a while. Awesome. That sounds great. I'm starving, so I'll take a full stack. All right, come on. Hey, Dad. Yeah, Mike? Remember that time we went to Disney and I ordered those Mickey pancakes, but they gave me goofy ones instead? I cried for hours. Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, you were bawling your eyes out. You never were a goofy fan, and when those pancakes came out, you damn near lost it. <laughs> yeah, I'll always remember that story every time I eat pancakes. Mm, that was delicious. Thanks again, Dad. I have to get to school since exams start this week, so I'll see you later. Finally, it's Friday, exams are over, I'm home, and I can relax a bit. Let's see what Robert has to say and how the story ends. Even if it's fake, it's definitely interesting. And now we come to this last part of the tape. I know it's the last part because there's nothing left that can be taken. I can't go to work because I say I've never worked there. Louise doesn't recognize me anymore. And now I'm in the park because I have nowhere else to go. The high school football trophy at the front of the gym where I went no longer has my name on it from when we won the championship. I tried calling my own dad and he said he didn't even have a son. That's it. I've lost it. I don't know if this is some kind of sick prank or not, but I can't take it anymore. If this thing is going to take me, then just do it. Whatever you are, whoever you are, please, just get it over with. I'm begging you, just... Huh. I guess that's it. No more Robert. Well, it was certainly an interesting adventure. I honestly can't say I've heard anything like it, that's for sure. <sighs> Time for bed. My brain is fried from exams all week and all I want to do is sleep. I can research more about Robert tomorrow and see if I can get in contact with him. <sighs> what time is it? Oh, wow. It's already 11. I must have hit snooze a dozen times in my sleep. Oh, well, whatever. It's not like I really need to be anywhere anyways now that school's over. All right, let's see if I can find this Mr. Burton today. I really do want to give him his tape back and tell him how good of a story it was. He really needs to get this out to people. I think it would sell tons of copies. I wonder how he made the tape look so old, too. He really put a lot of effort into making it seem authentic. Now let's take another look and see if it's truly that old. Uh, what the heck? Where is it? The tape is gone. I didn't take it out last night, so where is it? I must have taken it out and dropped it on the floor or something. No, not under the covers. Not on the shelf. Not under the bed. Where is it? Okay, this is getting out of hand. I finished the tape last night and left it in the player. There's no way I misplaced it. This is getting ridiculous. I'm being paranoid. Huh? Who's calling? Oh, it's Jeff. Hey, Jeff. What's up? Oh, not much. I tried calling you earlier, but I guess you were sleeping. Man, you must have been exhausted last night or something. You never slept in this late. Yeah, man. I was beat. Exams all week and my brain was fried. Exams? What are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean, what am I talking about? I exams all this week. And a semester. Yeah, man, I know what exams are. I took them too, but what exams are you talking about? You aren't in school. Ha ha, very funny. Just because I skip classes here and there doesn't mean I don't attend. <laughs> okay, Mike, if you say so. I mean, I know you always wanted to attend, but I guess you are trying to put yourself in the mindset or something for when you actually start. Eh, good for you. All right, Jeff, you're starting to weird me out now. What are you talking about? I'm in the same classes as you. We've both been attending for two years now, and we're both graduating next fall. You know that. Sounds good, dude. Whatever you say. Either way, hit me up later if you want to do something. Yeah, all right, man. See ya. Man, what was with Jeff? I don't attend school? He must be messing with me. Oh, shoot. I almost forgot. It's March 21st, and I need to text Stacy for her birthday. 
Uh, let's see. Happy birthday, Stacy. Love, Mike. Winking face. Hmm. Who is this? What? Who is this? It's Mike, your cousin. I'm sorry, but I think you have the wrong number. Ha ha, very funny, cuz. So, what do you want to do for your birthday? Turning 21 is an event. Listen, I don't know who you are, but please stop texting me. I'm not your cousin. I don't know anyone named Mike. Leave me alone or I'll call the cops. What the hell was that all about? I mean, Stacy has a sense of humor, but this is a bit much even for her. What's going on? First Jeff said I wasn't a student and now Stacy doesn't know who I am? If I didn't know any better, I'd say Robert's story is starting to sound more believable. <laughs> but who am I kidding? I can't fall for that nonsense. I know. I'll go downstairs and eat some breakfast and clear my head a bit. Hey, Dad. Hey, Mike. What do you want for breakfast today? Uh, how about pancakes again? Uh, sure, I can make you some, but what do you mean again? Well, earlier this week you made some, remember? Uh, sorry, but no, I don't. I haven't made pancakes for you in forever. Are you sure you didn't grab some at a Waffle House somewhere? Dad, come on. You know I would only trust you to make my pancakes. <laughs> they are my specialty, after all. And please, Dad, no goofy pancakes either. <laughs> you don't want me crying again. Uh, goofy pancakes? What do you mean, son? Dad, really? Is your memory fading? We just talked about this earlier this week, too. That time we went to Disney and I cried after getting goofy pancakes because I liked Mickey so much. Mike, I don't know what's gotten into you this morning, but maybe it's your memory that's fading. Son, we've never been to Disney. Dad, that's insane. Of course we have. Uh, don't you remember the scar I also got on the first day we got there when I tripped over that rock in the parking lot? The scar's right here. Uh, right where? I, I don't see anything. Mike, you should probably go lay back down again for a bit. Are you feeling all right today? Oh my God, it's happening. I thought it was all a joke, but it's real. Robert was telling the truth. Uh, Robert? Who's Robert? Is he one of your new friends? Dad, please answer this question for me. Am I a student enrolled in college right now? Uh, whoa, what are you talking about? Dad, please answer the question. Am I or am I not a student in college? No, Mike, geez, calm down. Of course not. You were talking about enrolling a while ago, but you haven't applied yet to my knowledge. Oh my God, it's happening. Mike, what's happening? Is something wrong? Dad, do you have a cassette tape? Now you're just talking crazy, son. What's gotten into you? Dad, I need a tape ASAP. Do you have one or not? I mean, yeah, probably somewhere in the basement. I stuck them down there forever ago when I replaced all my music with CDs. Okay, I, I need to go, Dad. Mike, what's going on? You're scaring me, son. Dad, I can't talk right now. I'll be back later. No, Mike, wait. It's already started happening. I need to find a tape quick. Come on, Dad, you said some tapes were in here. Where are they? Uh, VHS tapes, CDs, records. Ah, tapes. Let's see if any are blank ones. Uh, Metallica, Beatles, Michael Jackson, flyer from a store called The Needle Drop. Yes, here's one still in the shrink wrap. I need to take it upstairs to the tape recorder. Oh my God, what's happening? I need to start recording, but what the hell do I say? Uh, Robert said his name, I think his birth date, and some information that could be easily found in public records. Let's do this before it's too late. I need a marker or something to write on this tape. Uh, Mike Davinsky, Volume 5. <sighs> Hello. My name is Mike Davinsky. I was born on December 8th, 1992. My dad's named Scott Davinsky. It's now the 21st of March in the year 2016. I'm a student at the University of Cincinnati. Please, whatever you do and whatever you think after listening to this tape, I need you to do one thing. 
please remember me. It's always easy to look up records of celebrities. There are countless sources of information that one can reference from movies to interviews to magazines. However, when it comes to those that are lesser known, it becomes a much more daunting task to find out information, and it can sometimes even seem like someone doesn't exist. The most important thing to remember when you get the feeling that something isn't quite right is to not ignore it. Take it seriously. Investigate it. But please hurry, because before you know it, it'll be too late. Thank you very much for tonight's episode's Patreon subscribers, Robert Lear, as voiced in this episode, and my wife, Dominique. Chronicles of the Enigmatic is written and produced by Alex Spivak. Voiceover work for each episode is different, and the voice actors that contributed to this episode are stated at the beginning. For more information, please visit www.alexspivak.com slash chronicles. If you are interested in hearing more episodes, please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, YouTube, and other podcast services. And if you enjoyed what you heard, please remember to comment, rate, thumbs up, and like. If you really liked it, make sure to stop by the Chronicles of the Enigmatic Patreon page at patreon.com slash C-O-T-E podcast, where you can contribute to the show and become a patron with many great reward levels. Lastly, please follow the show on Twitter at C-O-T-E podcast. Chronicles of the Enigmatic is produced under a Creative Commons license and is under copyright starting in 2017. For any comments, questions, or inquiries about the podcast or its use, please email C-O-T-E podcast at gmail.com. As always, thank you for listening and stay tuned for the next chapter of Chronicles of the Enigmatic. This episode is dedicated to the voice actors who decided to help me out with this episode for the first time. I really appreciate you.